ABC 10 News starts now with breaking news. Less than an hour ago, President Trump seen for the first time since announcing he has contracted COVID-19. He was headed to Marine One on his way to Walter Reed Medical Center. As the president walked across the lawn, he gave a thumbs up to the camera. Late last night, the president tweeted, he and the first lady, Melania Trump, have tested positive. Trump now 74 years old. We start with ABC News reporter Elizabeth Schultz. Tonight, President Trump is at Walter Reed Hospital. Sources telling ABC the president is experiencing fever, chills and congestion. The White House calling the symptoms mild and saying the president will be working there out of an abundance of caution. Tonight, the White House announcing that President Trump is still suffering mild symptoms, but has been transferred to Walter Reed Hospital out of an abundance of caution. And at the recommendation of his physician and medical experts, the president will be working from the presidential offices at Walter Reed for the next few days. The White House physician saying the president is being treated with an 8-gram dose of Regeneron's antibody cocktail. The announcement that President Trump tested positive coming hours after news broke that one of his most trusted aides, Hope Hicks, had become infected. I fully expect uh, that as this virus continues to go on, other people in the White House will certainly uh, 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 have a, a, a positive test result. The president's chief of staff saying Trump is in good spirits. But sources tell ABC News the president did not participate in a scheduled call this afternoon about COVID-19 with seniors. Vice President Mike Pence stepping in instead. The vice president's spokesperson confirming Pence tested negative today. Also with a negative test result, former Vice President Joe Biden, who was on stage with President Trump during Tuesday night's debate. My wife Jill and I pray that they'll make a quick and full recovery. Some pointing to this Rose Garden ceremony Saturday for Supreme Court nominee Amy Coney Barrett as a possible source of the infection. There was little social distancing and mask wearing at the event, and at least four people in attendance have tested positive for the virus. Top aides also tell ABC News they observed the president not feeling his best after a rally in Minnesota Wednesday night, saying he appeared exhausted and fatigued. Hello, Duluth. Oh, thank you. The president has been heavily criticized for repeatedly downplaying the severity of the virus. It affects virtually nobody. It's, a, it's an amazing thing. Trump, at 74 years old and overweight, has often said he feels no vulnerability to the virus, even making fun of Biden for wearing a mask at Tuesday's debate. I don't, have to, I don't wear masks like him. Every time you see him, he's got a mask. He could be speaking 200 feet away from it. He shows up with the biggest mask I've ever seen. But today, even the man with the best medical care in the world could not be shielded from the virus that has claimed the lives of more than 208,000 Americans. A White House official tells ABC News the president has not transferred power to Vice President Mike Pence at this time. In Washington, Elizabeth Schulze, ABC News. Back to you. Thank you. Just minutes ago, the president tweeted a video of him in the White House about to head to Walter Reed. I want to thank everybody for the tremendous support I'm going to Walter Reed Hospital. I think I'm doing very well, but we're going to make sure that things work out. The First Lady is doing very well. So uh, thank you very much. I appreciate it. I will never forget it. Thank you. We have continuing team coverage on this. Just minutes ago, we spoke to the co-founder of the company that created the antibody cocktail in which the president is now receiving. ABC 10 News anchor Derek Stahl is joining us now live to explain what is involved with this treatment. And the president is on Regeneron, and we are told this will affect his immune response. Derek, you have the details to this. Yeah, Kim, that's exactly right. The president of Regeneron told me this is kind of like an immune response in a vial. The idea is to basically give your immune system a head start in the fight against the virus. Now, typically, it can take about one to two weeks for your body to build up antibodies in response to SARS-CoV-2. What they do in this case is they basically inject you with laboratory-made antibodies that are cloned from people who have already recovered from COVID-19. Now, just three days ago, this company, Regeneron, posted some promising results showing that this treatment reduced the viral load in patients. They looked at about 275 patients. Now, this is what's called a monoclonal antibody treatment. It sounds fancy, but basically what they're doing is they're just cloning antibodies, monoclonal because there's typically just one. And this one, they call it a cocktail because they're are two different cloned antibodies in it. They look through thousands of antibodies. They try to pick the, the strongest one. Now, this treatment 
is not FDA approved. It does not even have an emergency use authorization. So there's some questions about whether an average citizen would have been able to access this drug. President Trump was given this drug under what's called a compassionate use case. It's typically reserved for a dying patient. Of course, we know that this is not the case with the president. He's got mild symptoms. I asked the company's CEO about that. He said, President Trump is not the first person to get a compassionate use authorization for this drug. However, he does acknowledge that they are not going to be able to get it out to everyone until they get that emergency use authorization. Here is the company's CEO talking to ABC News just a short time ago. Now, there are about uh, 70 companies working on antibody treatments for COVID-19, including some right here in San Diego. One of those companies is called Active Motif in Carlsbad. For now, Derek Stahl, ABC 10 News. All right, thank you. We know you're on this, Derek, and we will get back to you. And this brings a lot of questions about what would happen if President Trump couldn't serve if he were to become incapacitated. The 25th Amendment would then kick in. ABC 10 News reporter John Horn is live to break that part of this down for us. John. Hi, Kimberly. Yes, and this is actually quite straightforward. The 25th Amendment is not long. This is basically how it works. It gives two options. If President Trump determines that he himself is incapable of acting as the president, he can write a letter to the Congress and transfer the power to Vice President Mike Pence. Now, this would last until President Trump says, I can again. Then he'd write another letter and get the power back. Now, it gets a little bit more complicated if President Trump is incapable of writing that letter. In that situation, Vice President Pence would gather the cabinet with a vote of the majority of the cabinet. Vice President Pence could then take the power if President Trump were to be unable to serve or do that in his own capacity. Now, this has only been used three times. We have a graphic that we can show you that lays it out. This is according to ABC News three times. The first time in July 1985, that was when President Reagan had surgery to remove an intestinal polyp. Then two other times, June 2002 and July 2007, that is when President George W. Bush had a routine colonoscopy. That or is the only three times that the 25th Amendment has been evo invoked in American history. Now, we will, of course, keep you posted as best we can as the updates come in. For now, Kimberly, I'll send it back to you. Thank you for that live update, John. And the president's local supporters are reacting to the news that he and the first lady have coronavirus. ABC 10 News anchor Lindsay Pena shows us why some say this doesn't change their views on the president's handling of the virus. It was just a few days ago at the presidential debate, President Trump had this to say about Joe Biden and wearing a mask. I don't wear masks like him. Every time you see him, he's got a mask. He could be speaking 200 feet away from it. He shows up with the biggest mask I've ever seen. It was a moment supporter Nick Garcia saw and says he isn't surprised the president now has COVID. They took the precautions. It ended up, you know, not working, but we have faith and we're going to be praying for him that he's going to come out of this. Garcia was one of the people who organized this Trump boat rally in San Diego last month. He says the news doesn't change his view about the virus or the president's handling of the pandemic. I think Trump's doing a really good job. Um, he's acted really quick with shutting down the borders. That's also how fellow Trump supporter Dan Summers feels. It does not change my view at all. And I think he's handled it uh, uh, very well. Like Garcia, Summers says he expected this, given the fact that Trump was traveling and holding campaign events. He told ABC 10 News he doesn't think this will sway voters one bit. The people that support Trump realize that Donald Trump is fighting for America and he's fighting for the American people against a Democrat party that's gone far left. They're not going to change their perspective at all. I guarantee it. They will all be there on election day. Lindsay Pena, ABC 10 News. The organizer of the Trump boat parade says that they are planning to do it again in early November. Stocks closed down on Wall Street today, but things weren't as bad as they looked overnight. The
The Dow lost 134 points. Futures initially tumbled 400 points after President Trump announced that he was positive. The Nasdaq is down more than 2 percent. The S&P 500 lost close to 1 percentage point. Stocks still managed to close up for the week. Stay with ABC 10 News as we track breaking developments from the White House. Remember, you can have alerts sent straight to your smartphone with the ABC 10 News mobile app. Just one day after several sharks were spotted at Torrey Pines State Beach, two more sightings were reported at Scripps Beach. ABC 10 News reporter Mimi Alcala spoke to lifeguards and is joining us now live from La Jolla. Mimi, they say these sightings are not a cause for concern right now? Yeah, Kimberly, that's right. Lifeguards got reports from two surfers that they spotted a six foot shark in the water here at Scripps Beach. I want you to look around and see it's pretty busy right now. There's quite a bit of people. It is really warm out here, but lifeguards were sent out into the water to patrol the area. They posted some warning signs, but no closures were put in place, and they say this is really not a cause for concern right now. As the warm weather continues to draw people to San Diego beaches, San Diego lifeguards are asking everyone to be cautious but not alarmed after shark sightings were reported Friday. There was no aggressive behavior and we're just out of an abundance of caution um, advising the public. But there's at this point, this has not posed any safety um, hazard to the public. At about 1030 Friday morning here at Scripps Beach, lifeguards say a surfer reported seeing a six foot shark in the water. It wasn't acting aggressively and it was heading north. That surfer says she was about 100 yards from the beach within the surf line. Crews quickly put up some warning signs. Once we received the initial report, we put uh, our rescue watercraft in the water and we also deployed uh, a surf boat to scan the area. Lifeguard Lieutenant Lonnie Stevens says that's when they received a second report of a sighting. A second surfer north of Scripps Pier, which as the crow flies would be about half a mile, uh, reported seeing a similar animal around that same time. This comes just one day after several sharks were spotted at Torrey Pine State Beach near Surfers, swimming about 50 feet from the shore just north of Black's Beach. We're lucky to have Scripps uh, Institute of Oceanography right, right here at La Jolla. They are reporting that this is normal behavior um, for this time of year for those animals. For now, beachgoers can stay in the water and surfers here didn't appear to be too worried. The sharks, they don't really attack anyone. I don't think they're, they're, not, they're, not, they're, not, they're probably not very aggressive, right? And I'm told that low level advisory will be lifted within the hour if no other sightings are reported. Of course, we will keep you posted. For now, we're live at Scripps Beach in La Jolla. Mimi Alcala, ABC 10 News.